uncivilized, and these are all words. Yeah. 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 James Brown. Yo, yo. Okay. Okay. okay, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Hey man, yeah. don't never fuck with a nigga that, that yeah, don't yeah. be girl. The nigga always yeah. gonna jealous of you. I swear to God, my mom had him. Ain't nobody ever gave me shit, I had to take this shit, go get your paper, bitch Rabbit potty training every morning, hoe, I'm cooking dope and cleaning baby shit Sachi road draping like a nigga, got a cape, but I can never save a bitch Fucking ball player, baby mamas hit me when your niggas play the Lakers, bitch We don't do no posting, no, no name tagging, California blow, she got a cane habit I don't want the pussy if the gang had it, was a hoe before she got the same habit Hold on, do no posting, no, no name tagging, dope and cocaine and got my name racking I don't sell a whip, I let the gang have it, got a pocket full of dead slave masters Get that white and I beat it up like a mic Jump a broke man, a nigga can't be like Mike Shed a dick man, a bitch gotta sacrifice Diamonds in my shit look like some flashing lights Presidential, I flooded that bitch with ice Cougar pussy, I fuck a rich nigga white Don't your cat, let me be from the bike, bike Porsche engine, that bitch in the bike, bike Louis luggage, that sit in the front trunk Uncle through for you y'all don't want die struck Throw VL out the window, I'm mobbed up Hit that progress until that bitch locked up Then I play my shit, pour something rocked up R.I.P. Robin Davis, we chopped up Screw a bitch in the drop with the top up Top up yeah. Ain't nobody ever gave me shit, I had to take this shit, go get your paper, bitch Flew a hole like 20 hours just to have a threesome with my new Australia, bitch Sachi road draping like a nigga, got a cape, but I can never save a bitch Every day I get an internet thread, boy, these niggas soft as baby shit Get them baby sixes to my side piece, 40 millimeter on the timepiece Take a hole and punch and get my muscle drunk, she give me sloppy toppy on the side seat I'm trying to be professional about this, this is the first episode of Very Late with Black Brains and Sad Godzuki I'm gonna call you Zuki from this point forward because that's uh that's a long ass name mine's a long ass name too so we'll we'll figure this shit out but this yeah. is episode one how you doing man I'm doing good how you doing I'm I'm fucking great I'm you know I'm doing me plain and yeah. simple uh, this has been like I know you and I have been talking about this for a while and making this happen like a while a while like yeah. maybe last year we were like, you know, yeah. kind of bouncing around. It. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I'm glad that we're doing it like this way at first. And then from there, you know, we'll see what we, uh, we do stream wise or, yeah. you know, if, like, I'm not trying to be too ambitious with this. That was something that like the both of us agreed on was just this doing this. Fun. Yeah. Just doing this. Cause it's fun, you know, plain yeah. and simple. So Tell the people about yourself, man. Like, I know a lot of people from a certain previous server would know you as uh, <laughs> a different name. <laughs> I don't know if you want to get into that. Uh, yeah, I was formerly NBA America. If you know me from the certain <laughs> Discord, it's him. It's I. That's me. Oh, Y'all know God. what it is. Yes, but sir. That's, but that's besides the point. This is going to be cool. We're going to talk yeah, about man. a lot of hood stuff. It's going to be fun. Actually, actually. Thank y'all for listening. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I'm, I can't lie. I was shocked that like people were like interested in listening to like <laughs> two black weeaboos talk about some dumb bullshit. But, you know, uh, there is a niche, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, a- like. Where where there is a need, there we you know <laughs> man, like you and I watched those first couple episodes of Velma. Yeah. And I knew that, that you and I had to talk about that shit. So let's Oh uh, yeah, man. Straight up fuck all these jokes, man. Like what were your <laughs> thoughts? <laughs> man, fuck the rest of the show. What were your <laughs> thoughts on uh on Velma? Oh Mindy Velma. Kaling's uh, uh brainchild. <laughs> Con- her conceited, like, fucking rant fiction that she wrote. Yeah, so somehow Mindy Kaling finessed the whole studio into making really bad fan fiction about her being the smartest person in the room and the most detestable person in the room all at the same time. My boy Shaggy looks like a mix between ter- Terrific Tyreek and Low Tier God, but they turned him into a whole soft nigga. Freddie's just so Freddie's just white and it's like the jokes is <laughs> he's a white guy so he had to do it because he's evil I'm like man this feels like somebody's bad Tumblr experience just like got animated 
and it just so happened it was Mindy Kaling. And, oh, and and Daphne's like a trashy like Korean mean girl in that. Too. Yeah, yeah, she's. I forgot. To, see, Daphne was such a one dimensional character. I forgot she was a thing. And she's yeah, and they had her like dealing drugs, which I mean, straight up, like who's buying drugs from Daphne? Who would buy drugs from anybody on Scooby Doo? Like maybe Shaggy. Shaggy, old school Shaggy, I buy weed from Old me. school Shaggy, he would have, yeah, he'd have that like 1970s gas where it was just like mostly grass clippings. Yeah. <laughs> and like dirt, he'd be like, Vince, look at you fucked up! That's awesome, Ricker! Yeah, and fucking Scooby shows up wearing a chrome hearts hoodie and shades is like, We're all looking to get wrapped up! <laughs> We got this Scooby snack, nigga. <laughs> oh man, I hated that shit when they. I mean, haha, you know it's fan service or whatever. But like, I hated that shit when they called like the drugs they were selling zoinks and jinkies and all that crap. Scooby snacks. I I forget what else they they. I know I one zoinks, of the drugs was zoinks. Scooby snack mystery machine. Mystery machine, yeah. Oh man. Okay, but I'm not gonna lie. They got a few cheap petty chuckles out of me, like. When the old girl died and she started singing Pony, it, it part was kind of funny because she was doing a slow rendition of Genuine's Pony. I felt like if they let it go for another verse, it would have been funnier and that would have been uh, be like, well, it had one funny moment. I think that was the funniest moment in the show. Was just, I, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm trying to think of like, it definitely had some, some really cheap, shitty laughs. Sometimes it would catch you off guard. Like when the girl uh, was like when the dope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or when like um when that dude got his entire leg cut like, off. <laughs> yeah, just knocks the, the sword just flies off, it cuts his leg off. And then later in the show it cuts his leg off again <laughs> when he gets it reattached. Yeah. Yeah, that was an okay gag. And like uh I mean the the Fred like Hitler gag was you know very on the nose, but yeah, very on the nose. Blonde, blonde haired, blue eyed guy. Now he's Hitler, and like Mindy visually, Kaling. it was pretty funny, like in that moment. But at the same time, it's like that's a very cheap joke. That like yeah, this guy's trying to do. He's trying to play this innocent angle as per his lawyer's uh, recommendation. Like, yeah, and then yeah, you know, he gets he's, wet. His hair goes into the iconic Hitler. Uh, comb over, and what was it like? One of his like fake his eyelashes fell, uh, fell down and became yeah, and became the, like the Hitler, the mustache. Hitler mustache. Yeah, it's like okay, yeah, yeah, very funny. Then it's the uh, <laughs> Velma Prosta. Now a joke that I thought would hit because it's just in my own fucked up imagination is Velma on the block selling drugs with that black hoodie. I thought that would be funnier than it was, but it wasn't. Yeah, because the the joke that they went for wasn't Velma would never sell drugs. It was like Velma's a, shitty a judgmental, girl. shitty Real, person. Yeah, she's like, uh, uh, help, a, uh, alert, a white girl with too much money. A white girl, I'm like, okay, that joke's not funny. Yeah. Yeah, she is a narc, though. Like, that that should have been where they kind of f- focused on the gags of her, like, unsuccessfully selling drugs because she's a nerdy recluse. Not because I, she's the smartest woman in the world and everyone else is stupid. I think they could have expanded on that. They could have had Velma Ghost to the uh, the hood. <laughs> yeah, they should have like hard cut to Velma like right outside of fucking Boulder Crest. <laughs> <laughs> like fucking Velma's in Zone Six with the rest of Slaughter Gang, and she's like, "Wow, well, um, so these make you feel pretty good." And it's like, "Oh yeah, straight up." Yeka, Yeka. <laughs> yeah, she's just trying to sell drugs to the young nudie in Twenty One Savage. It's just like, um, so jinkies make your dick feel okay. Oh, uh, I've been having crazy dick problems for real. Pause, but for real, <laughs> I ain't pee good. <laughs> Sometimes I pee too much. <laughs> Let me get some of them zoinks. <laughs> Let me get them zoinks right quick. <laughs> straight up, straight up. <clears throat> Man, that, yeah, that would have been funny if she was successful despite being an idiot. Yeah, see, then Shaggy, don't even get me started on the character assassination of Shaggy. 
they you made mean Norville. This, yeah, Norville. Yeah, I couldn't even call that nigga Shaggy. <laughs> this Norville. Well, like I, I at least you know, as as someone who I wouldn't call myself a Scooby Doo fan, but I always liked Scooby Doo growing up. It's yeah, like it was- them using his like real name because he's not Shaggy per se. That's kind of clever because Norville yeah. was always his like actual given Norville name. Norville Robert, yeah, Norville Shaggy Roberts. N- yeah. No. Rogers. Rogers, Rogers. Yeah, yeah. Rogers. Yeah, Rogers. I don't know why I was thinking about that. But I think the funniest part is when he, he just, they just look at the screen, he goes, they're doing drugs. Then he, they zoom in on his face, which I hate. <laughs> which I hate. Yeah, like they're really trying to deconstruct Scooby Doo, but they're not doing it in uh, an interesting way. No. Nah. Like I think, honestly, fucking. Um, Mystery Inc. Is that the most? Yeah, that, that wasn't the most that's recent. Not the show. most recent one. The uh, Shaggy and Scooby get a clue. Is the most recent one where they had that that art style that people. Oh, the like, Brickleberry oh, looking one. <laughs> yeah, the Brickleberry yeah, looking, yeah, yeah. But Mystery oh, Inc. Man, was that pretty. Shit looked terrible. <laughs> yeah, but Mystery Inc. was the one that had the overarching story yeah. that was pretty good that everyone slept on. And then there was that brief period where they had that movie where Velma was a lesbian and she's in love with that black girl. Oh, was that like? Oh, yeah, I saw clips of that. Was that like just a one-off a, movie? Yet another direct uh, video Scooby Doo movie. Yeah, then they had a little series on HBO Max for a minute where uh, Scooby Doo was meeting famous people from the nineties because it saw Scooby Doo met Steve Urkel. Oh damn! That's Scooby Doo met Steve Urkel. <laughs> I thought I showed you that. Clip. Yeah, they had to find the Urkel bot that went rogue and Shaggy and Scooby oh, hate shit. Urkel because they said he's annoying. <laughs> Like Zoink Scoob, it's Stefan Urkel. <laughs> hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> Man, you know fucking Jaleel White, this nigga probably gets so mad when people come up to him and go like, Hey man, juice and jam! <laughs> <laughs> probably more people say like, obviously, like, did I do that and all the Urkel stuff. But like, yeah. you know one dude sees Steve Urkel, fucking Jaleel White walking down the street and he goes like, I... I only know this man as Sonic the Hedgehog. I never watched Family Match. Oh, oh man, I'll be <laughs> Once they walk up, Fifthlet's born a throne. No way. She's just looking like, oh, God, not again. Oh, <laughs> hey, I, I wrote a podcast. Can you say Bartleby in your Sonya voice? No, I, nah, nigga, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I'm being oh, grown. I ain't doing that shit no more, man. I forgot that he was Sonya because they just toned up his He voiced voice. all three. Yeah, he, yeah, voiced, he all voiced all three. three. Yeah. Which was maybe the worst fucking idea ever. Yeah, Sonya singing. Oh. I was sounded like, oh, she sounded rough. Because she's just like, yeah. <laughs> it's just like Jaleel doing a really bad girl's voice. It's just him doing his murder Urkel voice. Yeah, it, it is. Without the two, yeah. Sonic, you have to get serious. Let's play in the band. Yeah, plus that bitch played a keytar, man. Like, that's for real. <laughs> you did play a keytar. <laughs> like, there were so many times I watched Sonic Underground, and I was like, man, these dudes are the worst band ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, these guys are horrifically bad musicians. <laughs> <laughs> and like the whole catharsis of that show, like every single episode, they'd have a song that would like, I don't know, inspire a group or whatever. <laughs> oh and yes. It's like they play like the most dog shit music. It's terrible. <laughs> Let's go and fight the evil egg. I forgot what Eggman was doing. He had a whole like he was a galactic conqueror or some shit in that one, right? Yeah, Robotnik was actually fucking evil as shit yeah, in Sonic was, Underground. Yeah, he was turning niggas into robots. Yeah, like he he won objectively in that series. Yeah, he and did. and the Sonic Underground were like an a literal underground resistance. Uh, which is crazy that those fucking three morons could do anything. To stop this guy's like, like he basically ruled the world in Sonic Underground compared to the Sat AM. Yeah, but they learned what's right. The leaders of the freedom fight. They were raised on chili dogs and bad rock music. Yeah, 
God they, damn. they started the revolution. <laughs> it's like we have to we have to put a stop to this. Oh, let me get my keytar. <laughs> Let me get my key tire right quick. Man, I always fucking die that like Jaleel White's like surfer voice for Manic is like, don't worry, dude. <laughs> We're gonna stop Robotnik. <laughs> uh, they could remake that though. They could totally remake Sonic Underground. They, they should could bring him back. They could get Ian Jones quarterly to be the surfer dude. <laughs> Man, I like <laughs> That's an inside joke that will probably <laughs> be a recurring joke on this show of Ian Jones quarterly being routinely clowned on. Mm-hmm. Like for for reference for people who might not know about stupid cartoons like us, like who is Ian Jones quarterly? Ian Jones quarterly is the creator of the fa- of the show Okay KO on Cartoon Network, and he's also he also worked with Rebecca Sugar on Steven Universe. Yes, and I believe they are they married or are they just like I don't know a if couple? they're married or they, I know that they're together. I don't know if they're married. Okay. Yeah. She liked the song Love Like You. She wrote that to him. Damn. Yeah. That's wild when a bitch writes a song to a dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's wild when the song is that's wild when that song slaps though. <laughs> You yeah, know, like you, just, you spit game. If I could only be half of what you <laughs> Yeah, you just gotta get fucking Omari on to sing that instead. <laughs> get like some early 2000s singing nigga Neo. <laughs> if I, I <laughs> could be half of what you think of me. Half of what you think of me. With the wind Da-da-da. flowing. In the white yeah. silk shirt unbuttoned. <laughs> Let me tell you. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, man. Just like, <laughs> man, remember like Neo wore that stupid hat? <laughs> Wasn't it the hottest bald spot or something? Yeah. Yeah, it was because his hair was broke, so he wore like yeah. a fedora. No, because from the Tory Lane's playbook. Yeah, because I was thinking about like before he got arrested and canceled and discovered his history greatest monster, R. Kelly could have did a good rendition of that, but nobody wants to listen to that nigga now. You'd be surprised how many aunties are willing to overlook but you Robert can't over- Kelly's behavior. Yeah, well, they've been doing that shit since 2003, so you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone makes mistakes. This nigga had a dungeon. Yeah, this nigga. <laughs> so he, he ain't supposed to eat? <laughs> he, ain't su- he ain't supposed to live because he had a dungeon. This nigga did have a dungeon though, whole yeah, dungeon. Yeah, straight up. Like in like, modern times though, like this ain't even the this ain't even the fourteen AD times, nigga. This the modern times. This nigga had a whole dungeon. Didn't he have some, one in Chicago and uh, one in Atlanta too? Didn't he bro, have like he, multiple dungeons? Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah. So. <laughs> Man, you know that some unfortunately underaged girl went down into the dungeon and then the Soulsborne text appeared that said Robert Kelly sanked him. <laughs> like it just played that sound effect. <laughs> you might think that yellow stuff in that bottle is Estes, but it's not. It's just some smile. <laughs> you, better, you better touch that grace before you go down there, good God. Man, I know this shit's wild. They wildin'. Oh shit! I feel bad. like if you can sing and dance, and you a black, and you a, you a good looking black nigga, you can pretty much do whatever you want and get a nod by the aunties. Just... Yeah, that, like at, at least within like like black <laughs> entertainment and black spheres, like yeah, you you basically have a get out of jail free card just because your hairline's nice and your teeth are white. And you can spin. He he ain't do all that shit. Did he start spinning? <laughs> he just spins on the spot. It's like, oh, he innocent. He innocent. <laughs> I, yeah, I just want to see another great black man taken down. They trying to take our black heroes from us. Like, nah, we ain't, we ain't claiming this nigga as a hero. But that's not the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> we went from Sonic Underground to R. Kelly. Man, 
I mean, Robert should just sing the intro to the Sonic Underground reboot. That'd be good. Here this ball in the throne awaits. I see her wounds of a deadly, a deadly man. Give up your children. Separate. This <laughs> just bitches throwing various negligees at him the entire time. Sonic on the ground, yeah. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Man, I fucking love that R. Kelly recording of him talking about abducting a woman from Africa and bringing her to America. Yeah, this shit's... Do you have your passport? Do you have your clothes packed? Would you like to come to America? America! <laughs> Man. This guy. Uh, this guy's straight up a villain. I love him. <laughs> R. Kelly's the first black anime villain. Him and Chris Brown. Like, Chris, Chris Brown's, Brown's like white skin for... Lex Luthor. <laughs> yeah, Chris Brown's more like. R. Kelly's like freezer level. Chris Brown's more like a uh, like a like a mini boss that the protagonist got to fight to show. Yeah, he's like Zarbon. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. He's like he'll fuck you up. He's like he's definitely a problem. But like, yeah, yeah. R. Kelly is Frieza. He's like yeah. flying around that ball. And then yeah, go. <laughs> yeah, he's just and Robert Kelly just fucking <laughs> the light skin force instead of the skin I need them Dragon Balls. Hold up, I can't read this shit. Read that to me. I need them Dragon Balls. I'm trying to unwish all these lies. (laughs) I'm fighting for my fucking life. (laughs) I just, this is weird though, because this nigga, man, nah, let's get off this nigga. We can, yeah, this straight up, we should just have an R, like an R. Kelly episode, (laughs) like. Once once my dumbass figures out OBS, we're just gonna stream Robert Kelly videos and laugh at them. Watch. Uh, I guess we can't watch um, Trapped in the Closet unless someone made a super cut and did like the borders and shit to it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just want to get to the part where the midget shows up, and everything else is pretty negligible after that point. But like part ten or some shit. Yeah, yeah. It's part ten. He wanted to keep doing it too. <laughs> He wasn't, like, do it until he died, okay, like, basically. Trapped in the Closet Part 1 through 4, classics, remakes. Good, yeah. good. Yeah. After, after the black dude was creeping with the hillbilly heavyset lady. Oh, the dude who looks... Uh, oh, it was Chalky White, wasn't it? It was Omar in that. Yeah, it was Omar who played the cop in that, right? With the fat bitch. You talking about Omar from The Wire? Yeah, yeah, Michael K. Williams, Omar. Yeah. It's Michael K. Williams, isn't it? Yes. I gotta rewatch it now. Yeah, he's the cop. Damn. You call him Chalk. Wait, what? What does he call Chalky White? What show is that? That's uh, Boardwalk Empire. I need to watch Boardwalk Empire. Yeah, he's good in it. Hey, have you seen? It was a good show, but I knew it wasn't gonna last long because it was uh, it was crossing too many lines for Hollywood. Uh, shit, what's the dude name that had the cat name, nigga man? Oh, H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah, Lovecraft. <laughs> <family>. No, no. <laughs> what's the dude who, yeah, you know, nigga man. Yeah. The... <laughs> you got me dead on that, man. <laughs> yeah, H. Lovecraft County. I like that show. It's pretty cool. It's subversive because it's like a, a, a H.P. Lovecraft story, but with black people in the early... I think it's the now it's after the Korean War, so it's the sixties. So if it was up to H.P. Lovecraft, every character would be named Nigga Man. <laughs> I don't like niggas, and I don't like that damn Cthulhu. I mean, that dude was just straight schizophrenic. That's why you could make horror that good. Yeah. Didn't like, they say? Didn't the clan say they didn't like H.P. Lovecraft being a racist because it made the clan look bad? Damn. <laughs> That's if I that's the case, a, that's hysterical. I, I heard the story like, uh, because I know H.P. Lovecraft was really popular during the uh, like the second reclamation of the clan or whatever. Yeah, yeah. 
So I think the one that's trying to do like the KKK gentleman clubs and shit that's like, we can't have this nigga HP Lovecraft here. He makes us look bad. <laughs> I might be a racist, but sometimes I won't cross. They're just looking at him. <laughs> when the rhetoric's too strong, the clan's like, nah, we don't Why? want to touch this. Oh, okay, all right. I mean, none of us like them Negroes, but uh, <laughs> sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Take your hood off. Get out of here. Oh, okay. Uh, Clam, can you escort Mr. Lovecraft out of the clubhouse? Good God. <laughs> and take I some mean, of my wife. Take some of my wife biscuits with you. But get, personally, get some of them Negroes can dance. I like I like that. I wish they do more of that. Hey, I was at one of them stuff. I was at one of them jazz clubs. I seen her. She was standing still, but her rump was just moving in different directions. I ain't never seen that before. That Cab Calloway fellow, very well dressed for his kind. <laughs> <laughs> his hair is so smooth. <laughs> Personally, that I would allow that Negro to consort with me. <laughs> I let him dance the same for me, but I wouldn't touch him though. Well, I wouldn't let him in my house, but you know he could. Attend church with me. <laughs> <laughs> On the other side, though, <laughs> like a moderate clansman, just going like, well, well, I agree. Most Negroes are, you know, they're subhuman. They ain't, they ain't people. But ah, that Dave Chappelle sure is funny. <laughs> It just keeps sliding, just go like, man, okay, all right, okay. all right. I don't, I, I don't, don't like, like your Negroes, but but Jordan was the goat. <laughs> y'all, y'all can't tell me you're watching a basketball play. You're, you're watching them basketball players, and you're watching the white ones. You can't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> I. <laughs> You are you are lying to yourself if you're saying that to me. You're lying to yourself. I mean, that's why Phil Jackson he was great because he could wrangle them Negroes. <laughs> Not a Negro wrangle. That's precisely what Phil Jackson was. I mean, I was yeah. talking to I was talking to a friend about this shit of like. Can you imagine having Dennis Rodman on your team and like the horrors of dealing with that man on a daily basis? Yeah. Not to mention the coked out bulls. Like, like, let's be real. Fucking Dennis Rodman's kind of like if Chris Chan was a good point guard. Man. Like a great point guard. Let's not take it away from Rodman. He, he no, nah, Rodman is amazing. Incredible. He incredible will get you that. Player. He will get you that rock back. <laughs> Yeah, but like, <laughs> but he was like, if the internet was as sophisticated as it was today, he would be a true lol cow. Yeah, he would. He's like, he like left, or what What was that one story? Like, he went to Vegas for like two days, and he ended up like getting inducted in a biker gang. Yeah. And like <laughs> the shit with Kim Jong uh, Un, and I mean, the list goes on. He was like, <laughs> Dating Madonna, if married you think about it, though, but That's let's wild. be real. If Chris Chan had charisma and was black, he would totally be Dennis Rodman. He could play yeah. back. Yeah, just because think about it, because niggas always just be looking up somewhere like, how, how is it that this nigga got with Kim Jong-un like no other person <laughs> from America can get a free pass in North Korea if they just get him to come over? That's because Dennis even, Rodman was chill as shit. Not even Jordan, although Jordan be like, fuck that, fuck that nigga, how much you got to pay me? Yeah, Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan's a fucking asshole, so he'd be like, hell no, I'm not going to North Korea. Hell no. Yeah, because I remember. I, can't, <laughs> I ain't about that. I can't tolerate yeah. that. Like, he would just be furious about it. It's like, no. I made her, <laughs> I took that personal. And then you'd say there would be gambling there, and I'm sure he'd be on the first flight. What gambling? On what? Unsanctioned casinos? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> what am I? 
<laughs> fucking Jordan just like Nicopla <laughs> packing it over that bag. Nigga pulls out. Nicopla How pulls far out is North fucking, Korea? Nigga pulls out the motherfucking first band pair of Jordan ones, the red and black colorway. He, I'm gonna give these to him if, <laughs> for a chit. <laughs> what these get me? <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, you know, like Jordan would touch down instantly, and like Kim Jong Un would go to shake his hand. And they'd be like, "Yeah, how's it going? Hey, where the casino was at?" <laughs> Y'all said there was casinos here. <laughs> Y'all said there was money to be made gambling. You are a billionaire. You should stop. No. I'm trying to play <laughs> fucking Chinese poker or whatever y'all playing here. <laughs> God damn. Man, uh, I'm Michael Jordan gambling in the main. <laughs> <laughs> like Kaiji, bro. <laughs> Jordan. Michael Jordan. <laughs> 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 Jordan. Jordan. Same art style. He's yeah, it would just a, be a Fukumoto a manga, but Jordan's got the fucking, like, his Ooh. Hitler mustache from the Haynes ads. <laughs> and his long getty nose, Dennis. Your dumb son. <laughs> ultimate gambler, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate survival, Jordan. <laughs> I played, I watched this shit. Like Michael go. Jordan's on that like boat where they're playing rock paper scissors is like, <laughs> it's only three choices. It's easy. It's easy. What are my odds? It's easy. It's easy. Everyone's Jordan, dead. He's you just, know in debt. He's like, oh, <laughs> me? oh no, nah, I bought my. No, I have. This, this for I dollars. brought two hundred million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> he's just got Birkin bag full of money. He's like, what's the spread on this? Yeah, fifty million down. Yeah. Wait, 50 million yen? Let me get out my own. Oh. Yeah! You, <laughs> you know, this, this dude is like... <laughs> yen? Fuck is he? Oh, in? God. <laughs> For the uninitiated, Michael Jordan was a horrific gambling addict. <laughs> if, our, if our rambling uh, did not make yeah, that abundantly loves, clear. He loves gambling, and he loves basketball, and he hates the kids. <laughs> He despises the children.
So, Zuki, yeah, we gotta we gotta talk facts. We gotta talk reality here. Why are niggas so into cartoons? I've I've always wondered this, and I have like theories. But like black people seem to like just kind of how do I put this? They seem as though they're willing to watch cartoons more openly than a lot of other people and like discuss them and they're interested in animation and especially like Western cartoons. Like what, why, why do you think that is? Because you and I are both very into like Western cartoons and anime, hey. but I know a lot of people would be very reserved talking about how much they appreciate Western animation, like Man. in adulthood. To be real, I think it goes back to Saturday morning cartoons and how most black people uh, come from a very insulated family so you be with your cousins and stuff and it'd be one TV back in the day so all y'all niggas was watching He-Man and G.I. Joe back in the 80s and like in the 70s whatever Scooby-Doo or whatever came on Saturday cause you know they only had like what four channels back in the day and they was just watching cartoons yeah. and stuff and yeah. I think it went from there then like kind of like how a lot of black people back in the day were watching Kung Fu Fix because they were super cheap in the black movie theaters and that's because those movies weren't considered anything to Western audiences. You could get them pretty cheap. So I guess it kind of just went hand in hand. Yeah, I had a similar working theory with anime where like a lot of like air TV channels could license anime a lot cheaper than a lot of other programming. So they would supplement a lot of their like early slots with anime. Yeah, because I know like there was a, a old network here in the states called UPN. I don't know. If oh you yeah, know I know before, UPN. Yeah, I know UPN. Before CW. Yeah. UPN used to show Dragon Ball Z back in the day, and it was yes. like the the, <laughs> the nigga network. <laughs> that's it, the, that's precisely how I watched Dragon Ball Z growing up because. <laughs> uh, you know, I won't out myself too much, but I'm I have mentioned I'm on like a border. So I'm I'm close to the States. Uh and yeah, so I so I got stuff. UPN, yeah. And, uh, and I would watch Dragon Ball Z before school all the time. Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon. Uh-huh. Yep. I remember I was like seven. Was I six? I was like <laughs> <laughs> this Sabrina chick kind of bad though. <laughs> then I realized her name's Usagi. Usagi, but damn. I like damn Sabrina life... could get it. That <laughs> yo, this Darian nigga gay. He... <laughs> <laughs> Look at me, this like, nigga yeah. fucking up. He fumbled in the bay. He got Sailor Mercury ammo. Yo, know, it's like when you were a kid and you realized that that Mamoru or Darian was um, tuxedo mask, like it clicked and you're like, oh, no, nigga. <laughs> He's tuxedo mask. <laughs> <laughs> like tuxedo mask was like slick Rick. And then you find out that he's this fucking preppy asshole most yeah. of the time. Like, oh, no, man. Um, 
see in the English dub, he, he, hey, meatball head. She's like, Ugh. I hate you, Darian. You fucking yeah, suck. Darian is an asshole. Call but that's dog. that's how you get girls to like you, is you mock them relentlessly. I mean, I wouldn't know. I just read about that shit. Andrew Tate said about it, probably. I learned about the school of Derry. Just throw a rose at a bitch. <laughs> you know, Darian would be making like alpha male strategy videos now. No, no, he wouldn't be making Bro, a alpha rose male. at a bitch. No, he wouldn't be making alpha male strategy videos. He would be in the early era of the quote unquote pickup. Oh, the PUAs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, my name's Darian, but people like to call me Majestic. First things first, make eye contact. Make it uncomfortable. Challenge the woman. Challenge the woman. And then you gotta throw a rose. Throw a rose. Women love roses. Roses are evocative of love, beauty, compassion, energy. <laughs> Then you gotta wear flashy clothes. I prefer a tuxedo and a phantom of the night opera mask myself. <laughs> Capes are very in. Now I know what you're thinking. Capes, kind of gay. Yes, <laughs> but that disarms the woman. <laughs> she won't know if you're interested. And that's how you play the long game. Plus, if you're a shroud of mystery, what woman does like a good mystery? Ooh. <laughs> I wonder Women what love doing. true crime. Women listen yeah. to true crime all the time. They have no hobbies. Man. You know I thought of, though, what? just for me, I would like a theater where the rules are. It's like the, uh, it's just like the, it's like the movie going experience, but it's going to be like, this is a nigga theater, so expect the work. So we just, it's like, if you came to watch the movie and enjoy you at the wrong theater, it's just going to be, oh, they're going to be. Shit. <laughs> Bro, I remember the first time, I, what was it? Transformers, the Michael Bay Transformers. Like, I With went the to the party, yeah, I went to the opening night of that, which was like the preview prior to the release. Yeah. And when uh, was it? Jazz <laughs> got ripped in half by Megatron. Yeah. Yo, this yeah. one nigga goes, oh hell no! <laughs> Why they Why kill the black, the black robot? <laughs> <laughs> and okay. like the whole theater just started wilding out because it was like half black people just losing their shit. Like, oh no, man. <laughs> no, but if you think about it, you remember those two racist ass robots from Transformers 1 and 2 that were so racist that Michael Bay just wrote them niggas out of existence. There's like the mini cars. Oh, they had oh yeah. They had like... gold teeth. Oh, bro. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I remember looking into this because I'm a weirdo and I'll look into like voice actors. The guy who voiced those robots voiced uh, Saws in Final Fantasy 13. That's funny. And he voiced the Black Baron in Mad World. Did you know? Did you know Michael Bay has did the first two Bad Boys movies, which I thought was funny because I'm like. Michael Bay, you can actually make some good stuff that's just not explosion. Yo, okay. All right, I'm yeah, I'm I'm gonna come through with a wild opinion here. Personally, I don't dislike Michael Bay. I don't either. I never um, disliked him. I've never really got the opinion of him being a shitty director. Because he just makes movies for like 13 year olds. Yeah, he, he makes just action makes, movies. He makes just juvenile garbage. That prints but it's money. Fun. And it's exciting. Like, yeah, he's got some stinkers, though. The Transformers movies after the first one are terrible. Yeah. Um, but, like, Bad Boys 1, 2, The Rock. Uh, honestly, Pain and Gain's really good. I don't know if you ever saw that one. I seen, I think I see. Nah, that's Walking Tall with the with Young Rock. Pre yeah, Pain, Pain Pre and Gain's the Rock. one where they're, uh, yeah, they're very roided. It's Marky Mark and uh, The Rock. Yeah, they're very roided in that movie. And Anthony Mackie's in that shit too. That's he's funny. the only he's the only black dude with a small dick in it, in it if I recall correctly. It's like he's with this like fat white bitch who's like consoling him even though he has a below average penis size. Damn. Yeah, that movie's oddly compelling cuz it's like 
what if Goodfellas was set in the gym? Like, it's it's a really bizarre, like, heist mob-esque movie. I highly recommend it. I was, like, I was genuinely shocked at how good it was. Yeah. That reminds me. Oh, yeah, so this morning I got up and I smoked. And then I decided to watch a Netflix documentary. I watched that one yeah. about the hitchhiker with the axe. Oh, uh, the... Guy. The smash, smash, smash guy. Yeah, yeah that dude. Yeah. Dude's a whole demon. I gotta look into that because, like, I mean, he... In all of his appearances, he came off as unhinged anyways. Didn't he... Yeah. He murdered someone else, didn't he? Yeah, he murdered a guy. No, the first dude... The first dude, he, uh... The self first dude he's, well, it might have been self-defense, but there's... The one dude was like, when he did this song with us, he talked about how when he met that dude in the car that he had to hit with the axe, he gave him a blunt that was laced with some stuff and dude started freaking out. So he might not, in, but that speculation of the dude saying that, because he confessed like, yeah, what would you do in this situation? He's like, dude couldn't even hold his own shit, running cars into people and stuff, so I saved that lady's life. And then the second time, he claimed that the older dude uh, gave him a, a spike drank and sodomized him but then they're like watch that video watch that video you hugging this dude and telling him he could stay at your you could stay at his place again and buying you a train ticket to take to the train station and then you couldn't then he went back to him the second day then he killed him and he tried to make up the story like yeah he sodomized me and all of this they're like well the evidence shows this guy was crawling and begging for his life and you stomped him out that doesn't sound like defense self-defense at all it sounds like you stomped the dude to death i was like yeah Man, I remember seeing like clips of him on uh, Kimmel when yeah. Jimmy Kimmel had him on. Yeah, that shit's on. spooky. He peed on uh, he peed on the Jimmy Kimmel sign when he was out there. In the, uh, yeah, and, like when I'll Kimmel was him. like, "Well, I'm I'm glad you didn't kill me with a hatchet," and like he got like all like weird and quiet, <laughs> like he was planning on it. He would have he would have killed Jimmy Kimmel. Yep. And frankly, like, is he that bad of a guy if he was willing to kill Jimmy Kimmel? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Joke. Jimmy Kimmel fell off, bro. What happened to the nigga that was on the man show back in the 90s? He sold out. Like, that like nigga's... Jimmy Kimmel straight up like a, a him high and key Car- sellout. Him and Adam Carolla were funny as hell. Is that his name? It's, Adam Carolla? Yeah, Adam Carolla. Yeah. Yeah. Adam Carolla is still the same guy. He's still a he same is, Yeah, on. his podcast, he's just still a weird, like, fucking... He, he's got that, like, pissed-off uncle humor that, like, Bill yeah. Burr or Mark Maron has. Like, just yeah, like, I'm off. a fucking pissed-off white guy. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Pissed-off yeah. white guy humor. Uh-huh. P-A-H. <laughs> no, P-O-H. Yeah, but, like, oh, P- Kimmel oh, sold out so fucking hard. He just went, like, I'm gonna double down and be, like, the least offensive person on earth. Like, I straight up hate late night shows for the most part, save for like Conan O'Brien. Like, what are your thoughts on late night shows? Man, I was gonna say the same thing. Conan O'Brien, uh, that's that's really it. Mm. Uh, the John Stewart before he retired. Well, had had some good points. Then he kind of just started rambling, and they got like less about. Yeah, he just he just become an old dude. <laughs> like I think that was just a byproduct of him getting old and pissed off. Or he's like everyone's Stephen wrong Colbert, except for me. He's funny when he's in movies, but like as the Colbert, see the Colbert report back when the Colbert report was new, and he was acting like a super like political dude on the right side he was just making a parody of how stupid everything was it was kind of funny but now him on his own show i'm like oh man this is just kind of lame like yeah we need our senior hall back or yeah, we, we need some real, straight up, we need we need some real like, late night shows back you ever see that clip of like arsenio had uh macho man randy savage yeah. on there and he was just like cracking yeah. up while like macho man was flipping shit and ripping his like suit in half and stuff it's great Late night shows gotta be more like that, where it's like unhinged, <laughs> like untethered. Like, like Eric, like Eric Andre, but that's not really a late night show. But he kind of 
Yeah. The beginning, he has it like a late night show. He just has a guest. I think like the there's a balance happens. where like you don't get into like the Eric Andre, Tom Green like area. Yeah, where like you still Very have nice. you have stuff that yeah. you don't expect, right? Like the show is very above board. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't yeah. have off the wall stuff. Like, um, yeah, I got you. What was it? David Letterman had like this director. I like Harmony Kareen on a couple of times. And this dude is a straight up demon. He's like a, a weirdo. But every time he had him on, it was hilarious because this guy was just so fucking bizarre. And Letterman was such a straight laced dude. They was like, what the fuck are you on? Basically. Like, I like that that kind of uh, dichotomy of, like, you have one person who's very straight-laced, and then you have someone who's, like, right unhinged or doing some wacky shit. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm not going to lie, like, my uncle showed me the back in the day when he used to watch the Tom Green show on MTV and all the wild shit that he used to do, like, yeah. undercutters where he'll come to your house. <laughs> with a pizza in here, but we'll undercut anybody's piece and he just throw the toppings <laughs> on the cheese piece for you. Man, I love Tom Green. Uh, it's f a fellow Canadian, but like the MTV stuff was very censored compared to his public access stuff. Like Tom Green had this one gag, if you can call it a gag, where he chainsawed a raccoon in half. Well, he had a real raccoon? Yeah, like a carcass. Oh, like it was already dead. Yeah, it was dead, yeah. Oh, okay. But he chainsawed it, and, like, every, all the entrails and everything flew into the audience, so people were, like, running and vomiting and stuff. It was crazy. <laughs> like, that man, that man is straight up insane. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I kind of miss that it's era. Always the, it's always the Canadians, too. Y'all got Yeah, we're, Curry, we're pretty Tom. fucked up. I can't Sick. lie. We're, we're fucked up. It's that French blood, ain't it? We don't. How dare you? <laughs> Though we sequestered those people to one province, and they keep on talking about seceding. Please do, please go. I heard about that. Some crazy dude was like, "Yeah, if the Quebec province seceded and they joined the man, like, why? We don't want them niggas. Who who said that? No one wants them, man. <laughs> French people hate them too."
bars on it. Last one had Hitler stamped on it. 24 karat gold pan jumping. 200 bands in the chrome hard pants. It's nothing. I read your offer. That shit was disgusting. I might sell my next shit for a million. Only seven copies and I'm dead for real. So serious. Tell your favorite rapper I don't feel him. Tell the plug the doors is off. It's time to fill up. If we make it home, we gon' kill him. Wins like this, woo. feel like when the Pistons had Chauncey Billups. Stow. As a piece of advice, personally, I haven't been able to act on it because I I don't I don't fuck with women like that. But fucking French Canadian girls are loose. So I gotta make a journey to Quebec. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Say we we. Perhaps I will be able to bag some bilingual fanboy, but we shall see. <laughs> bilingual. <laughs> He'll be like, je te monte, and I'm like, shut up, man. <laughs> oh, get away from me, bro. <laughs> I'm just gonna watch me some Pepe Le Pew cartoon. <laughs> be pulling up like Pepe. Is it will make beautiful musics together? Moo, 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 moo. Oh, mon chéri. <laughs> Man, yeah. I feel for that cat. That cat went through a lot. That nigga was a rapist. Nigga, she, the cat was a rapist too, though. Because you remember whenever he get the ability to stop smelling bad, the cat would be instantly... Oh, yeah, she'd swerve. Yeah, she'd, she'd, she'd swerve, swerve hella yeah. hard. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Man. Yeah, let's not let's not undercut the history there. She also did some dirt, cool. undoubtedly. Yeah. <laughs> so things like, no, not like and this. All, like, <laughs> this uh, that's precisely why I liked Looney Tunes more than Disney, is because, like, Looney Tunes was, like, way more unhinged and degenerate remember, than Disney ever was. Remember when Buzz shot that nigga? I mean, I said Bugs. Buzz. Remember Bugs shot that nigga for coughing in the middle of his performance? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and Marvin the Martian started oh smoke. Oh my god. Started smoke with Earth. What happened to the Earth shattering kaboom? Just had this stick of dynamite on a long ass gun. Man, one of my favorite gags is when like Duck Dodger shoots that bullet and it has like a um, <laughs> a threat in the bullet. Like it just opens up and says like if you respond unkindly, we will respond with excessive force yeah. and whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then Marvin the Martian just shoots him in response. <laughs> His bullet just opens up and just fires gunpowder yeah. at him. The Doug, you remember when Marvin, when Marvin was in Bugs was uh, beefing, Marvin had that ugly ass Martian dog and uh, they was growing those weird looking things out of the seeds and going to fight each other. Oh, the, the, those like big ass yeah, birds. Yeah, the big ass yeah. birds. 
And he said, in Blood Dodge, I use my disintegration pistol. And the pistol just disintegrated in his hand. A gag never got old. <laughs> oh my God, man. You know what? Yeah, it's like. My bad. You go. I didn't want to talk over you. Oh, no, no, no. Go ahead. I was going to say, you know what? Looney Tunes is funny. And I know that they had a bunch of them racist ass cartoons of how they depicted black people. But some of them shits was funny. Like that one with the black nigga with the big lips was hunting Bugs Bunny to make rabbit stew. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'm sure I'm sure a contingent of our audience will appreciate that. <laughs> the Zuki is based. <laughs> man, Zuki's based. Nah. I used to think that Brains was based, but Zuki's based. <laughs> nah, I just uh, I guess because I didn't grow up in that era, like, but mm -hmm. blackface I always thought was kind of. I still think it's funny as fuck because like. Cause to me, it doesn't look like a black person at all. Like yeah. factually, I don't know. Like it, it fluctuates with me. Like I remember seeing one of those, like you know, those, those like lawn jockeys or like those porch. Like, yeah, the lawn jockeys. Now, now those yeah. fuck with me. Yeah, I saw one of those in my town, and like I like. I don't think I've debated more internally about like fighting someone I don't know, like knocking on their door and going like, "We got fight, man!" <laughs> like, you know, like you, you must come out here. <laughs> you, you. <laughs> I wanted to smash that shit. I was like, I was like thinking like, should I like go to the hardware store get a hammer? Like, what what do I do? So I mean, I thought of, of a super inappropriate work outfit because I had the polo boots. I was gonna dress like a line jockey and stand in front of my <laughs> stand in front of my job with the lantern. Bring the lantern. <laughs> <laughs> and go like, hey, oh, it's good. It's a it's a prank, bro. It's a prank. Bro, you just you just sound, stand outside of your work on the line. <laughs> <laughs> Man. I'm very excited for like the one liberal arts black student who goes like, you guys are coons for that joke. You're race traitors. I don't know. It's not. I mean, yeah, it's fucked up, but I, mm -hmm. I just think like, <laughs> like a flash mob of people just doing like black racist caricatures just to make like a bunch of white people just uncomfortable. Just have like, just imagine, just imagine you just mind your business, you downtown in your city. And out of nowhere, you just see see a bunch of niggas dressing like old time, dressing like <laughs> we's gonna be free one day. You just see women dressed like men, yeah, like dressed as gollywogs <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, we's gonna be free, master. <laughs> just make people uncomfortable. Just twenty. Yeah, just walk up to people in like GameStop and go like, "Ooh, I I can't afford the Xbox Series X, man. So I'm gonna buy the Series X." <laughs> this show is a good did it right here, star. <laughs> Ooh, wait. This show is start hitting the watermelon jing jangle for. <laughs> <laughs> Way down below, <laughs> way. Just fucking singing Negro spirituals in the food. Doing part. that one dance that niggas back in the day did with their fingernail wagon shit. <laughs> yeah. God damn. The sambo shuffle. But this also brought me another question: What did niggas do yeah. to make society that mad? <laughs> Yeah, we we must have really pissed off these white people, man. <laughs> That's like a million slurs for black people. <laughs> I know we we only got like ten for white people. The best one I heard was yard ape, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what's a yard ape? I'm like, I heard of a porch monkey. I'm like, are niggas Pokemon? Nigga, you start out as a porch monkey, you graduate to yard ape. Who's that, nigga, man? <laughs> it's yard yard ape yard ape yard ape nigga yard ape. <laughs> It's Moon Cricket. <laughs> no, no. Yes, Porch Monkey. Porch, porch. Porch, porch. It's Blue Gum. Blue Gum. Blue Gum. 
<laughs> oh man, the joys of being a sub 200 subscriber account on YouTube. <laughs> I'd be terrified right now if I had 30k subscribers. I'd be like, oh, Susan's going to come down on me, boy. Nah, Susan, this here show is a good ditties right here. I'll, yeah, I'd just, I'd just go right to step and fetch it with Susan. Oh, lordy, Miss Susan, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to make the videos with... Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, yes, I is. Yes, I is. He's a protected minority. <laughs> okay. Just this one time. Don't demonetize him. Yeah, man. Being black on YouTube's like when you do the dodge and beautiful Joe and then speed up and punch <laughs> them like 500 times. <laughs> <laughs> so low. <laughs> Hench the go go, baby. Hench the go. That, that brings me to video games, man. So. Obviously, you and I both very into Vidya, but like, what are some games that you would not talk about with people or you were embarrassed about liking? Oh, bro, Reckless the Yakuza missions. If you know what that game is. Yeah, I do for the Xbox. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's basically just you're under arrest. <laughs> My, if you've ever watched that anime, my manga. She's like my mango pudding. I'll stop these triad bad guys. It's fucked up that that's not backwards compatible. I'd love to play some reckless the Yakuza missions. I actually like that game. Too that much. shit was great, <laughs> man. Nah, fuck that mission where you gotta where, where you playing with the spot niggas and you gotta uh, no when you playing with the two cop bitches and you gotta fucking deliver the blood packs without and the priads and they BMW keep t keep smacking you and fucking that shit up. I couldn't get past that part as a kid. <laughs> Good God, man, that's the first game with a bullet point. The second mm -hmm. game would be uh for the PlayStation One. It's like a shitty isometric shooter. I think it's called like Lowdown or something. Okay. The third one would be the Space Jam, the Space Jam PlayStation One game, because oh, it's like a shitty subpar basketball game. But it had like my man playing licensed games. Damn. Damn, nigga. The Aladdin PS One game. This shit's trash, but I liked it. Also, my parents got me a PS1 with no memory card, so all my shit I had to beat <laughs> once. If I turned this shit off, I had to start over at the beginning. <laughs> you just keep... <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Why did it... Yeah, I mean, you could have got, like, a broke memory card, like, uh, an unlicensed memory card, at least for I cheap, was, like, right? five. I didn't know what a memory card was. Oh, uh, that's fair. Yeah. So you're just like, oh, I gotta beat this shit in one yep. go. That's how... I can okay. That explains a lot because I know you and I talked about how like you never got too into like JRPGs. Yeah. Right. So if you didn't have a memory card, yeah, that would be a fucking nightmare. So I understand completely. Yeah. Then like I literally got Metal. I, but I was eight years old. And my uncle let me borrow Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid Two on the Xbox. Mm, like uh, subsistence. Yeah, yeah. I made it up. Or substance, substance. Yeah, I yeah, made it all the way right. up to the part where you have to find a dude with the pacemaker. I'm like, what the fuck is a pacemaker? <laughs> so I'm just listening to all these people. Like, listen for the heartbeat. I'm like, I hear all. Then I just put out my hand and started spraying, and I got stuck. I got soft lock on that stage <laughs> for like forever. And then one day I saw that they made that HD collection back when I started college, and I played it. I'm like, this. Is good. I'm like, Metal Gear Solid Two is pretty cool. Too bad the biggest threat of humanity is the internet. Oh wait. Right now, <laughs> with the JW, the George Bush uh, server farm that they had under the water. Yeah, I like when Raiden's just saying, like, oh man, Snake, life's pretty tough, right? And then Snake goes, you're, you're a bitch, and here's why. <laughs> he just like fucking takes Raiden to task, going, like, we live in a society. <laughs> <laughs> then then writing's like snake, I was an African child soldier fed cocaine and gunpowder. I killed niggas. Like Jack has had the worst possible life and Snake goes, Shut up, you fuck. They call me the white he's like, they call me the white devil. I was the only white African child soldier. 
Yeah, here's a katana, bitch ass. I was a clone test tube baby with superpowers. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. Know, Snake can't say he had a harder life than riding, nigga. Snake had genetic advantages. <laughs> Yeah, he was literally based off like the greatest soldier in history. Yeah, the greatest soldier in history. Ryan was literally like, oh man, this little this little white nigga got problems, bro. He's gonna be the best child soldier we ever made. Yeah, and then when he got free, he just joined a different military. <laughs> <laughs> they somehow suppressed my memories, really, but when I kill, I remember. My name's not Ryan, it's Jack. <laughs> Yeah, and then even even after that, like, you know, Rose was like, are we going to settle down and have children? And he was like, no, I'm going to have all my limbs amputated and become a ninja. He still had a child, though. They kept, they, for some reason, they gave him his balls and his dick, because remember, he has that ugly-ass child that's one that sailor to. Yeah. Yeah, in, uh, in MGS4, yeah. And then somehow... I was like, whoa, Dad, you're pretty cool! It's like, yeah, I guess. Fucking bitch. <laughs> I don't know, I guess. <laughs> Whatever, kid. Wanna see me fight Vamp? Who's Vamp? Is that an androgynous bisexual vampire? Oh, I don't like that guy. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Fuck Vamp, bro. How can he throw that shit on your shadow to make you stop moving and it made sense? Bro, Otacon has had the worst go at dating because Naomi Hunter was sucking Vamp's dick on bro, the side. My nigga Otacon, I caught that nigga death dick. <laughs> nigga, every bitch he wanted died. Except the only the bitch hell? he didn't want was his own mom. Yeah. This man got molested. <laughs> and then every single woman he tried to hook up with dies. No, stepmom, remember? Step it was mom. a stepmom. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. his own mama got fucking put in the tube and died. <laughs> that was fucked up in Phantom Pain. Yeah. Yeah, because Huey's an absolute piece of shit. Yeah, fuck Huey, bro. They should have shot that nigga in the head. Yeah, I'm man. mad the only reason you couldn't kill Hugh is because you could stop Otacon from existing, though. Yeah, we spoil this shit. I mean, this uh, fan pain's been out for like 10 years at this yeah. point, right? So, 2015. If you, if you haven't played Metal Gear Solid 1 to 5 yet and Peace Walker, like, you're never going to. Yeah. I, I played all except 4 because they have a PS3, and now I actually own a copy of 4 because it was. It was one of the free game of the month for PlayStation, but I have no PS3 to play it. So I watched Shit. the movie. Yeah, that's like... I mean, you basically played the game by watching a YouTube video. Yeah, I watched but... the movie. But I ain't gonna lie, if Konami could find a way to, like, retroactively remake every other Metal Gear game in that Fox engine, that would be pretty cool, Konami. I mean, they own the rights to it. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> Part of me wishes, like, the Kojima stuff didn't go down, but another realistic part of me realizes that Kojima's kind of a pain in the ass to work with. Oh, definitely. Especially, like, because I feel like it's, it's... But I feel like it's mostly Konami going, one Kojima game or nine million Pachinko machines to print money. Yeah, like, that was tragic when they made the, like, Metal Gear Solid 3 Pachinko machine and all the cutscenes were made in the Fox engine. <laughs> yeah, it looked incredible. Shit. Yeah, that shit, that shit cut me deep. But Damn. also, I like how Metal Gear, if you think about it, there's a bunch of homoeroticism going on on the battlefield. It's like, you know, can love exist on the battlefield? I like how you look at those shorts, boss. I mean, the, the sheer amount of like man asses on display in Metal Gear. With darkness and silence through the night What a thrill I'm searching and I'll melt into you What a fear in my heart But you're so supreme
a tree frog It's so deep the trial to survive For the day we see new light I give my life Not for honor, but for you It's the Jack guy China started a small time Scared to dwell on my past, I got Alzheimer's Told him my 30, me and girlie pulling all-nighters She made me wish I never met her on my Carl Thomas Dropping pints of red, popping bars for the healing But now we pull up cullin' there and stars in the ceiling Ten thought reverse and got me turned up like the power steering She still ain't talking about no money, must be hard to hear him Laid out the blueprint, how to run up the blue strips Remember Mock said if the blow take a three then that's goose shit Come through and flood your town with blues on some woo shit Sometimes I do them in the city for the two six Glock 23 extended 22 clip Big money heavyweight skinny as a toothpick But now we pour exotic pops and burn the finest crud Sim lines of mud that's all we know is design of drugs That's all we smoke that's all we pour is design of drugs Catch me somewhere on the west coast trying to find a plug Who we'll get it off the boat, that's all we want is designer drugs I want to take a very brief look at some of the news that's going on But like, what? Are, what's some bullshit that you, oh no you had a topic, you had a topic Spit yeah. that topic, spit that topic Alright, listeners Today's topic that I was just thinking about is hmm, Sus songs for a man to sing but you like by female artists I have a list here And I'm gonna just go from the list top top to bottom Yeah, go ahead Lizzo Proof Hurts (laughs) None of Your Business by Salt and Pepper The World Should Revolve Around Me by Little Jackie if you don't know, there was the song that was used for the intro for that New York show that was on VH1 with New York, who got famous off Flavor of Love, got her own little reality show with her crazy ass mom before she was on the Tyler Perry movies. My Humps by Black Eyed Peas, especially the Fergie parts. If you can rap the entire female part of Bark Bark Chicken Chicken uh, Chicken Head, <laughs> Wap, and the and I'm going down by Mary J. Blige. That's just a small tidbit of my list. Damn. For the next music break, I'm going to have to just have like song, but like those songs by various bitches. I was going to say, um, oh, what's that Doja Cat song? Bitch, I'm a cow. Like that. No, no, like that. With Gucci. Oh, you yeah, like that? Yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. He like that. He like that. <laughs> yeah. And they be playing these, some of these songs they play at my job. And I can't sing out loud. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, yeah, yeah, Doja Cat's filthy. Like, I love her because she's filthy as hell. But she'll say some shit where she's like, Yeah, I took the dick for a minute. (laughs) Yeah, I ate this balls for a minute. Like, she's nasty as hell. (laughs) <laughs> what what is with uh, like these fucking rap and R and B women being like ratchet ratchet? Well, see, Doja Cat is a Doja Cat's a real breed because she is mixed, so she got the uh, she got the she got both she got the worst of both worlds. She got the trashy this of a ratchet bitch and the trashy this trashy of this woman. white woman <laughs> woman yeah. God damn. The gift and the curse. Blueprint (laughs) 2. Christ. Uncle Lado, don't you care? Yeah. That's it. (laughs) I ain't ain't gonna lie, don't you care, period. Man, so one of the other things I've I've been watching, uh, well, I mean, there's only one episode, but I've been watching uh, the, The Last of Us series uh, on yeah. HBO 
So, like, what do you think of our first episode compared to the game or, like, you know, just your thoughts as a standalone well, piece of media? Considering that I'm not going to compare it to the game because the game is already a movie trying to be a game. And now this is a show about a game trying to be a movie. But it's a show trying to be a show about a game trying to be a movie. And I liked it. I was like, Paper Pascal, he played a good Joe. I think, like, his Joe was more, like, reserved than the Joe you see in the game. Because the Joe you see in the game, after he loses his daughter, he just becomes a whole asshole, like, fuck the world type shit. This guy, you kind of still see, like, the humanity in him. Yeah. I think the... I know a bunch of people are going to get mad about the show because, you know, the whole daughter bit where his daughter was like uh, a half-breed girl instead of it being. But I'm like, but if you played the game, does it really matter what what they did the daughter? You know what happens to the daughter? Like, that's yeah. the first, that's literally like the first big sting is like, this is my daughter up, she gone. Yeah, plus, I mean, like, I'm going to come clean, man. Like, the daughter dies pretty early in that game. Yeah, so, the daughter has like no. Hey, I bought you a watch, Daddy. Shot. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> like that's the two scenes you have with his daughter. And besides, Ellie was that one girl off Game of Thrones that, that uh, looked evil as hell. You know what I'm talking about when she was yeah. younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. evil ass girl with that hard ass fur jacket on. I I gotta say, Ellie like family. at first when I saw the casting with that girl, I was like really kind of skeptical. But ultimately, like, I think she did a really good job. Yeah, she did a really good job as Ellie. I was like, yeah, this is this is watchable. And I watch and I watch garbage because I like. Yeah, and I she like, like garbage, she nailed one. the voice really well. I know she yeah. wasn't trying to replicate it, but like she sounded a lot like Ellie from the game. Yeah. Say so you fuckers. I'll kill you. <laughs> yeah. Marlene. Yeah, she- uh, the lady that got to do Marlene, she looks just like how Marlene looked in the game. She it, did, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she had that, like, sad light skin face. Yeah. <laughs> Where, like, like she's, my she's doing the light... <laughs> she's doing, like, the light skin eyebrows and going, please. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Look, if you promise to get her there, we'll get you a truck and everything. Like, I mean, the only scene that kind of didn't show was, like, you remember in the beginning, Tess shakes that dude down with a pipe and beats his ass. Yeah. They kind of didn't show that. They showed where, like, some... But they did show the Fireflies being assholes and just blowing shit up for no reason. Yeah, and, and they, like, did a good job of conveying that Tess is pretty hard. Yeah. With her getting, like, her face bust up and still just being like, look, I just want to go home and drink <laughs> I was pretty impressed by that first episode, though. I, yeah. Like, I enjoyed then, it. Yeah, I was like, shit. I thought this was going to be like every other video game adaptation. I was wrong. I'm like, shit, I'm going to watch this shit now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to that second episode. Straight up. Yeah, this shit was surprisingly good. I recommend it. Watch it, even if you didn't play the game. But to be real, I think this is going to get people to either look at the game if they never considered playing a video game before like that. I think it's going to pull motherfuckers into playing The Last of Us. I think so, too. Yeah, it's going to like add some which credibility a, to that. Which is a good game. And the fact that they're going to go into, I think they're going to go into Ellie and Riley's backstory, too, in this, too. Because she mentioned her at the, remember she mentioned her at the, uh, when she was like, you think Riley was a terrorist too? And she's like, no. Because, you know, the, mm. that's why Ellie became a firefly anyway. Well, joined because of her girlfriend, Riley, was one. Yeah. But that's. But yeah, you know what, Neil Cuckman? You did. He, you did. Get... <laughs> <laughs> Neil Cuckman. No, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic with what I've seen so far. Yeah. Because, like, it could have been, like, the new Mortal Kombat movie. I liked it because it was garbage, and it's a movie I can watch at the theater and get high and eat food and watch. But it wasn't a good movie at all. It was fucking trash. Not even a little. Not even a little. Like, you put in this new self-insert that's from Scorpion's line of family. Oh, I do man. MMA. I do MMA. What's your, what makes you happy? I thought about my family, and then it just put this armor on my body. And then I one-shot at Goro. Like, nigga, how? 
It's Johnny Cage. Then they're gonna put Johnny Cage in the second. Like, how the fuck is it gonna be Mortal Kombat without Johnny Cage? Argue, he's literally the main protagonist of the series, according to Ed Boon, before he resets the timeline for the thirtieth time. <laughs> Cause they're green glow shit he can do. Yeah, I mean MK's timeline's fucked up. I mean MK Eleven's all about fucking up the timeline for God's sakes. <laughs> Well, MK9 is they reset the timeline again. MK10 is like the consequences of resetting the timeline. MK11 is like, fuck the timeline. Luke Kane's now the what? The super guardian of the world or some shit? Yeah, yeah. He's he's like the new god. Yeah. Well, one last question before we wrap up. We're going to have a quick music break, and then uh, we got the last question here. So... Zuki, this is a serious question before we wrap up. Yeah. What chain of what character would you get if you made it? If I made it? Yeah. Like, it had to be the Super Milk Chain piece. The red part of her hoodie. Oh! The red part of her hoodie would be rubies. The rest would be different color stones of different... Uh, the white part would obviously be diamonds. The rest of the part would be different colors, shapes. I mean, different color uh, stones that match it. And that's what I would rock, because it'd be like one of one. Oh, damn, the super milk chain. That's dope. Yeah. I, I like, I've been thinking about this for a long time, of like, if I was to get a chain, like a 50k, 100k chain, like that. I might, I might get the Jack Frost chain with, like, all diamonds on, on the body, because he's uh, all snow. Yeah, then the ru then rubies for the, uh, I mean, sapphires for the... Yeah, it'd be sapphires for, like, the hat, yeah. Yeah. I think sapphires and rubies look better than diamonds to me, because they have, like, like, we emeralds, because they have color. It's just not like, but it's whatever. No, nah, I think that'd be tough. Like... No, nah, that would be tough. I, yeah. Also, maybe the icy bear, you know, the bear on the icy thing with the Oh, board. yeah. <laughs> That'd be a hard ass chain. I always, like, I always joke about getting the Mojo Jojo chain. That'd be dope, too. Yeah. 
ah, in the brain, the part of it's like, I'll get it. If like the brain cracked open, it's all rubies. Yeah. Yeah, the brain <laughs> cracked open, it's rubies. Then for like yeah. the little detail lines, you can make it like purple diamonds. Yeah, that'd be tough. That'd be very no, tough. No, black diamonds. That'd be, that'd be hella tough. But it's chain of, but that alone costs you like a million, you know, just for that chain. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I don't anticipate ever making enough money to fucking get this novelty monkey chain. Also, it's also a sauce monkey too. Damn. Just thought about it. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about the monkey chain. <laughs> I mean, he was an educated ape. Okay. He's very he wanted, smart. He, he was like one of those one smart chain. niggas. <laughs> he, was, he was like Tanase Coates. He was one of those smart niggas who wrote books. Oh yes. He's, did he's you know, talking about race identity. Did you know the mountain the mountain gorilla is one of the only species that preys even upon itself? Yeah, he's like one of those fucking African academics who's going like equity <laughs> And then the Powerpuff girls still stomp his ass out. Well hell yeah. That was <laughs> <laughs> that shit was good, man. Like, I'm I'm very happy with how this first episode went. This might be short for like what we're gonna go for down the line. We're just kind of aiming to do like an hour, hour and a half. Yeah. But uh, I don't yeah, think looking forward to to future stuff. Uh, Zuki, anything you want to plug, man? Like Twitter, any socials, anything you want to plug? Uh, you can find me at say. Uh, Sagazuki at twitter.com that's it okay hell yeah I'm, I'm not gonna plug too much of my stuff but I got music on the way and you can uh, follow me at slugboys ent on twitter.com shout out Elon <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and yeah like future music shit's gonna be good and of course, we're going to keep on making good shit here. So, Zuki, thank you so much for coming on. Appreciate it. No problem. Glad to be here. Absolutely. And uh, thank you so much to all of our listeners for tuning in. And mm -hmm. we'll uh, see you probably a week from now. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Have a good <laughs> yep. night, everyone. Good Very night. Very late. <laughs> all right. Peace, peace, peace.